Press the like. Press the like. Press the like. Press the like. Hello. Check. Press the like. Press the like to act. You have to. You have to press the like to activate my microphone. All right. Bam. Um. Yeah. I'm standing because I'm. I'm going fucking nuts sitting down and talking. Sitting down and talking, I think it's the like antithesis to who I am as a person, which you didn't fucking ask for. Probably half of you just put this shit on while you're like, I don't know, you're doing some assignment or you're cleaning your house. That's the funniest part about these commentary videos is, is sitting down and talking to a camera when probably 50% of the time, uh, whoever is on the other side is just not fucking there. <laughs> and yap to a camera with all this energy and you're doing all that ah, and literally the other side of the phone is empty it's just like i'm trapped in this little screen like and then the like and this, isn't this and then you're just off to the side like anyway so in the video the return of weird dms there's this young lady who talks about her aunt who took like a paternity test and her aunt found out that she was part of like a fertility fraud scam Fertility fraud is when someone is fraudulently fertilized. That's like when you forget to pull out. Or if you do it with a syringe. That's fertility fraud. So yeah, that girl in Weird DMs talks about her aunt. And right around that time, this documentary came out called Baby God. And a lot of people it urged me to watch it. So I finally watched it. Oh. <laughs> this dude redefined the term super spreader. It is crazy. This dude's name is Dr. Quincy Fortier. I'm gonna call him Dr. F. So Dr. F was a doctor for 60 years. 60, six, zero, okay? He had a dynasty of fertility fraud cases. And I don't even think a lot of them are accounted for. This all kind of kicked off recently. And this dude, he's got kids that were alive during like, I don't know, <laughs> it's 2020 minus 60. Let me think about the math for a second. He died in 2006, and he was a doctor for 60 years. I mean, this dude was giving semen away all the way up until 90 years old. I don't know how you do that. Indestructible semen. How is it alive for that long? You know, most of us, our swimmers tap out. His dick was looking like an old pasta machine, just, <laughs> just pushing out the shit. Don't worry, once we get it all out, it's gonna make a nice baby. <laughs> so yeah, back to the story. This dude claimed to take a fascination with fertility because he grew up on a farm. And it was something to do with, like, cows. One of the cows on his farm couldn't get pregnant. And so from that, he became very interested. And I like how he says that, like, that's sort of astute and honorable but nah, I think that's just weird. <laughs> Why are you seven years old obsessing about getting a cow pregnant? Isn't that like the first sign that you're crazy? That you either want to fuck or hurt animals at a young age? I think at a young age, your relationship with animals is only ever supposed to be, you know, like friendship. He grows up and from that small town in Nevada... He moves, I think, closer to Las Vegas, and he starts this fertility clinic. And if you've ever been to Nevada and looked around and thought, man, everybody here kind of looks the same, it's because they are. Over the 60 years of his career, people would go to him for fertility issues, and he was just... He was getting everybody. Everybody. He would claim to use a mixture between, you know, the husband sample and his sample. But there's a lot of evidence in the documentary that suggests this dude was not using a mixture. Also, I'm not a doctor, but I don't think semen, you know, it's not like Coke where you can just, you know, cut some things together and still get the same result. Like semen is pretty final. The highlight of this documentary for me was at like 29 minutes and 40 seconds. And I wrote down the timestamp. They started off by showing the results of his experimentation right or or not experimentation but his insemination practices and it's like all these people who discover that their dads aren't actually their dads then they go on to talk to his kids and at 55 he adopted these two young girls and they kind of get their opinion of him 
because they seemed to be his only supporters in the entire documentary. And they started talking about him. You know, he was loving. He took care of us. Da da da. Then it gets to this point in the documentary where they're talking about how how smart he was. And they say, I mean, not only was he our father, but he was also our OBGYN. And I mean, we just thought that was so great because not only was he our father, but he was our friend. And what better than to have your best friend looking after your health? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Your adoptive father should not be doing any kind of science. Okay? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Right after they say that, they kind of try to bury it with more compliments about him. Something about his intelligence. Then they hit you with this zinger. <laughs> They're like, I mean, he was such a great man. I mean, he circumcised himself. Who do you know that can do that? <laughs> Fucking nobody. Because <laughs> that's fucking crazy. <laughs> that's not something you brag about. <laughs> you realize how at your fucking mind you gotta be to pull the fuck. People cut themselves splitting a bagel and they pass out. It's not a sign of intelligence or, you know, profoundness that your dad could have stood at his looking at his shit rock solid like <laughs> That's crazy. And what what gets even darker is that there was a dude, he went and told his mom that he found out uh, you know, that Dr. F was his dad. And his mom gets all shaken up and she goes you know what's wild? I went to see him because I just wasn't feeling well. I didn't even go in there for fertility. So he just put his shit in her just because. I found this clip uh, from Dateline where this lady goes, there's no penal code around it, which is just, she has slipped that in there, huh? She's just trying to play devil's advocate in the conversation, but there's no devil's advocate here. But that's the problem, is when it comes to fertility, uh -huh, comes. It's uh, there, there are really no laws about it. They're starting to be, but it's like, it's a massive problem. There are these other doctors in that documentary who provided their own samples and they're just, they don't give a f at all. One of these guys just chain smoking cigarettes. He's got these long ass fingernails, but you know, he's just sitting there chain smoking. He's like, oh yeah, we give our samples all the time. Back in the day, uh, going through medical school, we used to uh, donate for 50 bucks, 50 bucks a pop. He hit that line, and I knew that line would hit so many men all over America if they had seen this documentary. Because to know that during this whole pandemic, you could have been cashing out. You was just giving that shit. You was just donating it to everything <laughs> but a sperm bank. The toilet, ruining towels, all that toilet paper that you fucking got in fights for at Target. Can you believe that? You guys went to Target irate, upset, fuming, fighting, arguing with, with people. To get a, a thing of toilet paper. Just a fucking nut into it. <laughs> That's the other part to all this that sent my head in a spiral. Because apparently, you know, semen is... That shit is hotter than GameStop. Uh, there's this article I'm looking at right here. It says the semen industry is a $5 billion industry. And I guess because of coronavirus, people aren't donating sperm as much. And sperm banks are running out. And actually, for the last few years, there's been this weird, like, you know, resurgence in, like, what I only could describe as, like, the Ted Bundy gene. But it's, like, a weird kind of wholesome version of it. But basically, it's these dudes. They're, like, these sperm donors, but they kind of make it like a... <laughs> it's like they're influencers or something. Like, they just donate it, and they maintain relationships with all the people that they donate to. And when I mean relationships, I just mean sort of like, yeah, I'm, <clears throat> you know, I'm technically your dad. He's not around constantly. I'm gonna sit down and play this fucking video. Look at this right here. Before we get into this video, I wanna call out the most notable, or like the most popular at least, that I've seen. It's this dude, he calls himself the Sperminator. As of five months ago, this dude is up to 70 kids. If there was a leaderboard for inseminators, I mean, this dude is up there. And which maybe is a good thing, because maybe, you know, a, a guy like Dr. F shouldn't hold the record for most ovaries clapped. You know, it should, it should be a guy like this who 
treats it with respect and, and love or some shit like that. Now, this video is a little bit old, but I, I'm only I'm only referencing it because I just feel it's a it's a good example in the midst of all this. You know, this shit is like 10 million views, but everything's relative. On the internet, 10 million views now is is almost like you know a thousand ten years ago. It's just so much content out there. Who even fucking cares? <laughs> it's a magical moment at an airport as a father greets a daughter he has never met. This is my daughter number 19. That's right. Michael Rubino has 19 children. And here they are. Hi! Oh <laughs> Looking like a meet and greet. Oh, man. I know there's like a pun in here about MagCon or something like that. <laughs> This is kind of genius, man. You donate your sperm, and then you just create a tour of meeting uh, your kids, and you charge them. <laughs> you make them pay. <laughs> Meet your dad. Inside Edition brought them together for the very first time. What has this been like for you? It's very exciting. It's a little surreal. <laughs> they range in age. <laughs> Hi, Dad. He's like, oh, relax. <laughs> relax. It's just on paper. It's not like that. I'm not your actual, you know, calm down. Calm down. Kinda sounds like a TV sitcom. Only this family story has a huge twist. Michael Rubino isn't raising these 19 kids. He was the sperm donor for their moms. Did you ever imagine <laughs> in your wildest talk about a full house? It feels like I need a bigger house. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. You know, this this is cool. I like his approach. I like that he's open about it. Da da da. You know, even the sperminator dude, he runs like a Facebook group and you could just hit him up. <laughs> Yo, look I'm sorry, just in the middle of all this, look at this right here. Look at this. The channel is called Loose Women. That is fucked up. The sperminator on fathering tension. Look, this is not this is not a crazy thing. Just dudes do this. The requirements are high to donate sperm. That's the only problem. So, you know, a lot, a lot of you, uh, you know, doomer dwellers you know, sleeping on your blow up mattress to donate sperm. Now it's, it's difficult. You have to like, have gone to college and be like five ten or some shit. I would draft all kinds of dudes that you could pick from. Maybe you want a short child. Maybe you want a, you know, a man who's five, eight, you know, at least you have that option, right? The NBA and all these NBA franchises could be minting off this instead of denying one-off relationships they should be doubling down they should be monetizing these experiences they should be creating fan experiences you know <laughs> could you imagine if every year if the timberwolves gave out you know if you paid like a certain amount of money and you could potentially be one <laughs> one fan to get sperm donation from a top player off the timberwolves clearly it's a need anyways yeah Go check out Baby God. It's a it's a good watch. It'll, it'll mess you up. I promise you that. Let me know if you like this format. I liked it. I had way more fun. I don't like sitting down and talking. I like standing you know, for whatever reason. Um. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Press, press the, the like. Press, press the, the like. Press, press the, the like. Press the like. Hey, she's playing and I had to switch it up. Yeah, might lose a few, ask me if I give a fuck yeah.